But one of the things we were chatting about sort of offline, I mean, my, my bag is all about pricing. So I love talking about money mindset and um, the fact that when we were children growing up, you know, all of our education um, from our parents and our teachers was all geared around going to school for 14 years, past your GCSEs and A-levels. You must go to university in order to get a good job. There's two things which I realised now, you know, coming into my 40s that... I really wish that, and I don't, obviously I can't regret it because it was out of my control to a certain extent when you're a four year old, but relationships and money, like neither of those two things are really spoken about. Like I know that probably, maybe I was un unlucky, maybe my parents, I just ended up with parents who didn't want to talk to me about those two things, but I've had to kind of figure it all out over the last like 39 years to get to a point where happy and confident around money and detached from like the outcome of what money actually is. And, and relationships as well. I mean, I wouldn't say my relationship's perfect, but again, it's in a much better place than it, you know, ever has been. But all of that stuff, I wish I wish they'd taught at least a little bit about that in schools. You know, we, you talk about sort of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the basic needs at the bottom of that pyramid, you know, is, is to have safety and a roof over your head. And the only way to get that is through money. And what you, they don't teach you as well is the fact that if you end up with a mortgage, you end up with more worry and stress, which actually starts to erode that security away. You have the roof over your head, you have somebody sat next to you, but you're still full up with all of this stress because you've got to find a way to pay for it. And I think this is one of the things which I get the most sort of um, joy out of my my work is because, you know, my thing is all about empowering business owners to confidently charge more and get to a point whereby they have, um, Not we're not talking about here like, you know, you hear it on Clubhouse all the time, seven, eight, nine, 29 figure businesses and all that. This is about helping people to start to become sort of through their business, financially free, to have the freedoms which they have kind of been searching for, like me, for most of their lives. So the, the client wins which make the biggest difference to me. You know, one of my early clients, I always I always quote them, Richard Namey, sorry, um, I ran a small web design business and over the course of 18 months we uh, quintupled their income from the web design business, which meant that, and this is the, the bit which I really enjoy, it meant that they could um, afford to get married. So they hadn't, they had two young kids, hadn't got married to this point, can't afford it. They could afford to save up for a deposit for the house. They could, um, uh, Richard went and got his first office and the crux of it, his wife, um, Amy used to work in, um, public sector so when she was able to quit her job and come and work for the business full time it's like brilliant the key to unlocking it for them was um when they realized that they they needed to ask or tell the world what they wanted they needed to just get it out there in some way shape or form and in business terms what that also means is um when you're selling a product or service actually um if you want to earn more money, you've got to ask for more money, which means you have to put the prices of your products up. Now, there's obviously a methodology, there's a process which you go through in order to achieve that. Um, yeah. It's not just like double your prices and hey presto, because actually what happens is if a business, if it was that simple, everybody would be charging like loads more, right? They would just do it. The reality is though, money has such a, a negative attachment association with most people. For most people, what their money blueprint looks more like is years and years of their parents saying things, especially like in the formative years between the ages of sort of three and seven, their parents saying, well, you can't have those trainers because they're too expensive. You can't, we can't go on holiday this year because we can't afford it. What it comes down to is like, at th between the ages of three and seven, like, you know, I have, I have seven and four year olds, so they can count. My seven year old can add up a bit, but she doesn't really understand fair value exchange at that age. Mm -hmm. But our money blueprint, and I hope that mine's been relatively healthy for them that I've passed down to them. You then as adults, you then rely on that poor money blueprint that your parents gave to you when you were like seven years old. And this is the same for 99% of the population in the world because the, the, the reality is like most of us, we don't have trust funds or silver spoons in our mouths. You know, some of us did have unfair advantages around where we were brought up, what universities we went to, the level of intelligent natural intelligence that we ha were born with and things like that we've got to get into selling packages based on outcomes and results but this is this is where like the first step though in in doing that because this is where people are like well that's great but i can't sell a 10k product okay yeah 
so you, it's all about confidence and your you know your psychology background so it's all about confidence and their ability to deliver and like you know the all of the bumps in the road along the way it's it's simply a numbers game okay we know the numbers like so from days old of cold calling 70 10 2 so 70 calls 10 appointments two sales so a good conversion rate is like one in five to one in three for most business owners so go and pitch 10 people the next 10 prospective clients at 1800 pounds for that package and i can guarantee that you'll close maybe two three or four of those clients mm -hmm. and what typically tends to happen is the first client that they sell at higher than what they were previously selling it at the penny drops oh yeah i get it now because they've actually gone out and validated a theory a hypothesis played the game yeah. somebody said yes and that's just validated them we're a mirror. We we project and we reflect like what's going on internally internally for us. Very much like uh, uh, more so in, in anything money. Like that is the one place where everybody has these hang-ups for the reasons I explained yeah. earlier on. So when you can start to see abundance and that actually that fair value exchange and that just abundance, somebody saying yes, I, I get it. You're going to do a great job. I have confidence in your ability to deliver and it's validated externally. We then like start to then validate internally and it starts to like we can join the dots up at that point. But again, most people just get in their own way and they just go, well, I wouldn't pay that much. So why would anybody else? And it's like, well, you just made a decision for all of your potential clients there. Like you've got no evidence to back up that theory. I've seen so many business owners get broken because they haven't had the confidence to put their prices up. So when you put your prices up, you make more profit. You have more money in your bank account to be able to have more fun with it and like experiment with all the different marketing things that are available to you out there and try out different stuff. I call it the sales cycle of doom. Sell, deliver, sell, deliver, sell, deliver, sell, deliver. Just going around in circles the whole time. The moment you charge a bit more, you've got more time to deliver a better quality product which produces more money on the back end. And so gradually your universe just expands over time. Um, and you get more time back. You get more of the freedoms back. Um, and it's more fun. People like beast themselves. They put themselves through the mill, uh, you know, because they think that they have to show up every day. Do you know what? If I start walking up the steps to my office and I think, head's not in the game today and I've got nothing important on, I'll go down the wave in Bristol and hop on a surfboard. I'll take my dog for a walk up into the woods. I'll go and book a back massage. I'll just do something to make myself feel good, feel a bit better. Well, for the people I want to serve as well, that they can't have me showing up when I'm not on like the top of my game. If I'm not at the top of the game, I might as well not show up. And I know that sounds a bit negative, but I also deserve me at my best as well. Because if I show up and give 90% and my clients, you know, they may not know that I'm giving 90%, but if I'm sat there thinking and feeling I'm giving 90%, I'm not, I'm not doing good stuff, like not giving myself just good justice there either. So, you know, if you can show up, a hundred, you know, you can't be 100% all the time, but just take some, create some space for yourself, re-energize, refocus, come back when your mind's back in the game, deliver a shit ton of value to people and feel good about it, I think, you know, and that's where it starts to get fun when you just have that level of, you know, groundedness about you.